Hey everybody, happy Sunday. Welcome to Etc. Live. I'm your host, Kelly Barrett. Thank you so much for joining us tonight. I am beyond thrilled, as always, to have tonight's guest on. Uh, it's always a pleasure to welcome this lady back to Etc. Live. She's become a good friend of the show. Uh, I'm just going to go ahead and say hello to singer, songwriter, Lee Aaron is in the house. Hi, Lee. <laughs> hey, Kelly. I'm doing good. How are you? Good, good. So good to see you. I um, I just want to comment on something. Uh, we met actually a few weeks ago at your at a concert in Calgary in person for the first time, which in was kind person. of was really fun. Yeah, it was amazing. And I finally met another woman who's like the same size as I am, which never happens. <laughs> I thought you were like a little bit shorter than me. <laughs> I probably was. You probably got an inch on me, Leah. I'll give you that. Yeah. But yeah, you know, it was it was really a thrill for me because I you were one of these women, Lee, that I watched from the get go and what really you were one of the ladies that motivated me to want to get into this business. And and I remember just being obsessed with Metal Queen. And I and and I know and I worked at Kelly's Stereo Mart. That was my first job. And we had this huge picture, this huge, huge poster of you and. And uh, the odd time someone would say, you kind of look like that girl, because apparently when I was younger and I had dark hair, people would say, you kind of look like her, which I take as a huge compliment. <laughs> and uh, But, you know, if somebody had told me that down the road, I would be, first of all, chatting with you on the show and hanging out with you backstage, sharing skincare secrets, it would have blown my little mind. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> yeah, well, the whole Metal Queen thing was a little bit bigger than life, wasn't it? That whole, it, um, at the time, so... Yeah. quite impactful I think too is because it was that album came out right at this sort of inception of much music and MTV and so artists were just starting to do a lot of visuals for their music and so I think that that you know you know whether it's good or bad it got a, a heck of a lot of mileage at that time so yeah <laughs> well it was quite an image like it you know it, it you definitely had a look and um you know for what it's worth and we've talked about this on on past shows before we about how you know there was this whole sexualization of metal queen and really your your perception and your idea of it all was to empower women not so much sexualize them but and that's the way it went but um you know it certainly was a great springing board because wow metal queen was was just one of those albums that everybody remembers you know everybody knows where they were when they got that album or you know, <laughs> the first metal queen and, you know and that kind of stuff so um I get a lot of those comments. Yeah. Like, I'm I'm sure sure. You're like well, and it's funny because I just got a, um, a text uh, the other day from one of my other cousins. And she said, you know, when you played Dartmouth this year, one of my other cousins that I hardly ever get to see, she's like, we want to come to the show, me and my husband and tell her that we met at, and you know, at one of her concerts. And then they, they've been married now for like, whatever, like 35 years. So it's, it's just neat to have, stories like that um just as part of your legacy you know going wow these people met and now they, they've been married for 35 years and do you know what i mean like to be part yeah. of people's history like that it's just it's really really a really unique feeling and um yeah and i feel honored right and you know i think you know you've gone through a lot of transitions you know you've you know you've worried into jazz and different types of pop rock but you know and i think in some people's hearts you're just always going to be the metal queen and that's okay <laughs> well, more I, don't know, I don't know that it means the same thing like fans that have been um steadfast and they have stuck with me year after year and they're they love my new material as well and they buy the new albums i don't know that maybe metal queen sort of means the same thing that it used to then right. to them do you know what i mean i think more it's more of just like a a crown of empowerment now rather than you know you know Right, it's, right. As, uh, as it was well, intended, I'm kind of hard, like, <laughs> style or, you know, like, you know, making, you know, making dinner in my loincloth with my, <laughs> my sword, <laughs> my giant samurai sword, right? <laughs> Get up the game that you just hunted and killed in your, you know, in the field kind of thing, right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> right. On Oh, so many comments flying in already. And I knew that was going to happen because people have been really excited about this. So I just want to give a big shout out to Gordon Enright. Uh, Chris Preston, uh, Gordon Enright. Oh, he's a huge fan of the show. He's just... I know all these names. Yes. That's, that's the sort of cool thing about socials now is that you really, really can get to know people who are your you know, big supporters and top fans, right? So I, I, it's really wonderful that way. I love it. Isn't it funny? Hi, yes. Hi Gordon. Yeah. <laughs> Hi, Gordon. Um, oh, Tim Farrell's in the house. Uh, hello from White Rock. He's saying, oh, you know, you're going to know this guy, Mike Dinger. 
Uh, oh, Mike Dinger's in the house. <laughs> yes, I do know Mike Dinger. <laughs> Sound tech extraordinary. Hi, Mike. Always good to see you. Yeah, yeah good stuff. Um, yeah, it is really cool to see the names in the social media. And and uh, it was kind of funny because when I when I went to your show in Calgary, I walked in the door and some stranger comes up to me and he goes, are you that interview lady? <laughs> <I was Aww. laughs> Why, yes, I am. <laughs> it was So, yeah, the social media has definitely, definitely yeah. been a plus, yeah. especially you know, for doing shows like this and whatnot. I do want to leave, um, I want to give a huge shout out as always to my show sponsors, Writers and Rockers Coffee Company, who you are definitely affiliated yeah. with. You have your own blend called Body Rock. Yep. And it's uh, delicious. I just it's, put that out there. It's very, it's very, 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 if you're a coffee fan and a reader, which we, we all are in the band. Um, so I have my own coffee blend called Body Rock Blend and Sean Kelly has uh, his Crash Kelly Penny Pills blend, I believe it is. And, yes. But uh, I love me. I'm sorry to cut you off, but I have to say this. What I love, love, love about you, because you're probably too humble to mention this is so Lee donates 100 percent of her coffee's proceeds to the Never Alone Cancer Fund. I absolutely love that. And th again, that's probably not something that you would mention, but I had a bit of a chat with Robert Young. And uh, first of all, what influenced your decision? to turn all the proceeds over to this obviously very worthy cause? Well, uh, uh, where do I start? <laughs> I'm having a generous you know, um, I've uh, I've been involved in various charities over the years that have supported various causes. I'm still involved right now with um, uh, one called Guitars for Vets Canada. I, do um things with them as well where it's uh they raise funds and they provide they put guitars and lessons and which music is like therapy into the hands of traumatized veterans wow. um, so wow. because music is healing um there's that and then and i you know i was in a big benefit out here last year um for bc cancer foundation and uh, we're going to be involved in another one this year and uh when the idea of doing the coffee came and they were talking about how they were going to pay me the proceeds. And I thought, you know, I would rather use this as a platform to donate to something I care about. It just because um, I'm doing okay. I mean, I'm not, I'm not, a, I'm not, you know, Mick Jagger. I'm not a big, or Madonna. I'm not a big rich rock star, but um, I think it's important to give back. And um, I asked Robert, if he had a charity locally that was near and dear to his heart and could we just filter the money directly there and he got back to me right away and he said yeah there's a friend of mine who's got this cancer foundation here in Winnipeg and it would be really convenient and I said cancer <laughs> supporting families with uh who are living with cancer it's near and dear to my heart I have lost um two of my best friends in the last decade um I wrote about this actually just a week ago I think on Facebook um, my mother, my father is a cancer survivor. My own husband is a cancer survivor. My, um, it's just, it's touched my life in so deeply in so many ways. Um, you know, losing one of my best friends when my son was six months old was just devastating for me. Um, I mean, it was sort of like new life and then death, you know, it's just like, yeah. but it's the age kind of that we're at. Right. And it's, mm -hmm. I don't know anybody that hasn't had it touch their life in some way. And um, so, yeah, I was just all for donating to some type of thing. I mean, I, I wish that, uh, you know, like everybody in Canada would go buy a bag of my coffee because I'd love to give more, you know? Um, but yeah. So yeah. If you want to go buy some body rock blend, it's delicious by the way, and it's going to a great cause. So 100%. And um, you know, I, I love that because you are, it's right, Leah, everyone's been touched by it. I lost my father to cancer when I was five. And so there, you know, there isn't anybody that hasn't been touched by cancer. And so, uh, and so Robert and I were chatting. And so the Never Alone Cancer Fund was actually started by Lyle Bauer, who was uh, a former Winnipeg Blue Bomber player and right, right. resident after he was diagnosed with uh, stage four th uh, throat cancer. And incidentally, Robert Young wrote his story uh like Lyle Bauer's life story called What Doesn't Kill You a few years back. So uh, well, great title, right? Yeah, it's, it's a cheeky yeah. title, but it's um and so yeah I just I love that I love that you would donate the proceeds Lee and and uh, so I'm just gonna say this and this by the way what I'm about to say for viewers at home is not information I got from Lee. 
um, because again, Lee is far too humble to mention this kind of stuff. But Robert was telling me, because I'm curious, well, where does this money go? You know, like specifically. Yeah. And he and Robert told me, and maybe you don't know this, Lee, but that some of the money that, that you had donated went towards uh, buying a special Barbie doll girl, Barbie doll for a nine-year-old girl. I did was, not know that, but I'm yeah. delighted and, and, and he gave me a picture of her and uh, with her Barbie doll. And I, I wish I would have got to put it up, but, uh, um, and that other donations of yours, Lee's, uh, went on to, uh, towards providing palliative care for a woman who was terminal who wanted to be at home with her husband. Oh, well, that beautiful? I, I don't even know what to say. That's just warms my heart. Isn't that beautiful, right? To yeah. actually know it's specific, like it's one thing to, it goes to a fund, but to think that, you know, a, a nine-year-old got the Barbie doll of her dreams and, you know, another terminal woman got to spend her last days with her husband. So well, and to actually know that it really is going to where it's supposed to go. I mean, that's right. that's always my um, number one thing when I'm involved in charities, because, you know, not to criticize anyone in particular, but a lot of these um, funds and charities are set up in a way. I mean, look at all the trouble that the guys with, you know, we dig on into. <laughs> like, I mean, it's just a lot of them get set up and then so much of the money goes to administration fees minister, or, or uh, mystery sort of things. And, yeah. then, and it, it's not actually going directly to where it's supposed to be going. And that's, I always want to be involved with things where I know where the money is was going and what it's getting used for so yeah. right good stuff and you also won the gold bean <laughs> I, I, well, Did you know? when, when I got this package the last time I was in Winnipeg I got home and I was showing it to my daughter and then I saw this little charm thing because I it's just so chaotic usually backstage I'm not able I wasn't able to go through the box and look correctly and I got, I'm going what is this thing and then Sean Kelly I saw him he goes oh I got a golden bean I'm like I got a golden bean too what does that mean he's like it's like a half a million coffee beans sold I'm like yay <laughs> honestly like that's kind of an award I'm proud of like it's almost better than a Juno right I, I would guess I would you know when I kind of figured you'd say that because really that's I mean yeah I can see where that that would be that award would be much more rewarding yeah. It's like a difference. I know I thought that was awesome. I had a good shot with Robert and and uh yeah. So and he just regrets that he couldn't give it to you in person, but he said you got it while you were in Winnipeg, so that he's happy you got that. Well you can tell him that I, I stole the uh the writers and rock, rockers uh black hoodie from Sean Kelly. <laughs> that was not a Sean Kelly. Kelly. I'm like I saw it, I'm like, oh you got a hoodie. I'm like, you go, oh, you can have it. <laughs> have it. So I right kind of for it. yeah, guys, check out Lee Aaron's Body Rock Coffee and 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 your proceeds will go to a very worthy cause. And that's at Writers and Rockers Coffee Company.com. Check it out. Yeah. Um, let's talk about the new album, Elevate. Yes. What a great album. I I was I was listening to it all weekend. So I'm a huge fan of Spitfire because man, what a sexy song that is. That is <laughs> Thank <ultra> you. <laughs> Thank you. Um, yeah, a lot of people like that song, but you know, unfortunately you can only release so many singles and you can only, I only have enough money to do so many um, videos, right? Um, but that is sort of becoming a fan favorite. Um, it, it, you know, the way that song came about, um, I had actually been listening to one of the more recent Lucinda Williams albums because oh, yeah. She kind of went in this kind of almost like Jack Whitey bluesy heavy direction with this record. I'm like, this is actually really cool. Like I was a fan, mm -hmm. um, you know, of hers anyway. I mean, I I have quite eclectic tastes. I like all kinds of different stuff. And anyway, I'd sent this to both Dave and Sean. And within 20 minutes, they both were inspired and they wrote a riff and they sent it back to me on my iPhone memo feature, you know, I got a text from them like, ooh, and I listened to both the ideas. And strangely, they were both in the same key and they were both really, really cool. And I thought, I bet I can just import both of these ideas into my logic and I just piece them together. And Dave's uh, riff ended up becoming the verse and Sean's riff became the chorus. And they both oh, seamlessly cool. fit together. And then I ended up, you know, just sort of splicing and dicing, putting it together. And I wrote this vocal on top. And uh, yeah, there you go. I um, love it. It reminds me of a, like I almost picture like a black cat singing it. Like it's just got that. <laughs> it's a little bit dark. But but in a really, like I said, a really sexy 
seductive way. I just love it. It's it's like uh, it's hip, it's almost hypnotizing. Like it's kind of got that oh. <laughs> coming to my web. Kind of. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. What is, what are, when you think of a Spitfire woman, what do you think of? What do you think of Spitfire woman? I think of. Um, you know, no secret. A lot of my my songs are written about about uh, finding your own personal power and standing up for yourself. And um, so, yeah, when I think of Spitfire Woman, I think of you know just uh, a woman who is a firecracker who yeah. um, <clears throat> has finally reached a place. And I, you know, because it took me a while to get to this place in my life where. You stop putting self-imposed limitations on yourself right. and you just go, I am my own creator. And I, the only person limiting myself is me. Yeah. I can do anything I want. And, uh, you know, and if I don't have that skill, well, I can learn it. You know, Absolutely. it's, uh, you know, years ago, you've probably heard of this book. And I don't know if we ever talked about this in our last interview, but there's a book by uh, written by a lady named Julia Cameron called The Artist's Way. Have you heard of this book? I have heard of that. Well, yes. it's a fabulous book. I mean, it was it's probably 25 years old now. Right. And I, I did the book and the workbook 20 years ago, over 20 years ago. Um, but one of the, throughout the book, she quotes uh, various different people. And um, one of the quotes that I stuck with me, it's funny, you know how you have things that sort of just like, really resonate with you and stay with you for years. Absolutely. I don't remember the author of the quote, but the quote was, someone had said, do you know how old I'll be by the time I learn to play piano? You know, and th this person's answer was the same age you will be if you never learn to play. Love it. Thought, Love wow. it. I thought, that's exactly right. Like, we're all getting older. There's nothing we can do to stop it, you know? Um, you might as well, you know, you, why limit yourself? Why limit yourself? There's, you're never too old to learn a new skill. That's what I think. Exactly. You know, I, I think as we get older, we're in, we're more in a powerful position to do so because we have, we have a little more of a focus and do you know what I mean? A little more of a, like, I never was interested in school when I was at school age, but when I got to be an adult, then, then you're in a position to really, you know, focus on something and absorb it and learn it if it's, so I get that. And, and I totally get those, those, those little, you know, quotes that stick with you. And uh, there was another book, and you probably heard of this, called Feel the Fear and Do It Anyway. Yeah. Yeah, it was by Erica Jong. And that really stuck yeah. out to me because I don't necessarily remember a lot of stuff from the from the book, but just the title of the book itself has, has, been, a, has been like a model that I've carried through my whole life. Feel the fear and do it anyway. And yeah. you know what I, mean? I couldn't tell you anything about the book, but I remember the title. And one thing I do remember was the question, if you didn't know how old you were, how old would you be? Uh, that's a great one. That's pretty good. If you just woke yeah. up to in this body, you had no clue how old you how old would you be, right? And that's how you live your life. And and I love that. I love that philosophy of, you know, there's no limitations. And and do you think that's a, a skill that comes just with experience and maturity? Experience, maturity, but also... I think it's just, it's a lifelong process really of growing into yourself, you know? Um, it's interesting because I'm I'm in the process right now still of writing my memoirs. And I actually just, um, another gentleman from Winnipeg, speaking of Winnipeg, the Winnipeg crowd, <laughs> I had just sent a couple chapters, sample chapters to John Einerson. Do you know John Einerson? I don't. Oh, he, you should know him if you don't. He's a very, very well-known uh, Canadian uh, author, and educator, and biographer. He's written, if you look him up online, he's written probably 15 Canadian uh, bio, autobiographies and co-authored biographies by, like, Neil Young, Randy Bachman, like, oh, wow, I think Burton Cummings. He's just, like... He's quite prolific. He's written. So, anyway, he's a good friend. And I sent him and he was very enthused and um, by what I had written. But one of the things I was talking about in there is how I I just have so much more self-confidence now than I. It, it's weird, like, you know, even like when because like, when you're in your you know, teens and your 20s, you're especially as a woman, like you've got hormones, all this stuff. And you're just like, I don't know, like I was just. 
I know I paraded around like the most confident rock guys <laughs> on the planet, but deep inside I was going, do I look fat in this? You know, yeah, I, I get you. Yeah. Like, and like now that I'm older, I'm like, hey baby, I'm gonna own it, you know, like yeah, I loved what um uh Michelle Yao said at the uh um the Grammys. Did you see that? That she was she was the star of everything everywhere all at once. Right. It, it swept the Grammys and she she got up there and she said, ladies, don't you ever let anyone tell you 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 are past your prime. Because right? you know, right. Because I, I love, love, love it. I love that mentality. Just like, uh, you know, so I, I, I'm i just like, you know, we're all getting older. There's nothing we can stop. There's nothing that can stop that process. But holy crap, I feel like I got so much left to do. And so, right? you know, and I'm just, I'm more enthused than ever to just move on to my next project. And I, I, see, and I see that, Lee. And, you know, when we're talking about, you know, we're all getting older, I think, thank God, because consider the alternative. <laughs> Yeah, we could all, you know, it. like there's times when I think, oh, you know, when I turned 50, I was like, oh, well, holy crap, how, how did this happen? And, you know, because it just seemed to fly <laughs> by. And it's like, uh, well, just be grateful you live this long because, you know, it's a, you know, if Dr. Phil says, you know, aging is a, it's a luxury, not everybody is afforded. So, well, and, I, and I think nowadays things are so much different. You know, you can start new careers at 50. You can, you know, write, write another book, pump out another up. Well, you, you are a shining example of that. And I think what a great message to send women and what a great role model you are, Lee, because I would imagine that now with the shows, you probably have two generations in the audience, you know, younger women and, and their moms, I would imagine. And so what a great role model you can be for these, for, for all women, for anybody, but for women in particular. Oh, well, thank you. I mean, <laughs> I'm just going to keep doing what I, what I do. And um, yeah, I mean, it is, it is pretty inspiring, um, especially when I get the opportunity to do an all ages show quite frequently, there'll be, you know, sometimes, you know, it's like a mom that is my age with her, you know, 30 year old daughter with her 12 year old or something. You know what I mean? It's uh, I do see that once in a while. The, and they come to the autograph table, and it's just, I'm like, come on, ladies, let's do a selfie together. Oh, this, is, this is special, you know? Um, so that, yeah, that's just the most the most um, amazing thing to see and the most inspiring thing for me to want to continue doing what I'm doing, continue writing, writing music and being creative and not putting any limitations on myself. Absolutely. But that said limitations like I just know what I'm good at and what I'm not good at it's okay. funny you know gotcha. and so when I, the things that I'm not good at I like to find amazing talented people to pull into my team that I can go hey I'm not really great at editing but you are you are so <laughs> let's work together you know what I mean so right and speaking of which Lee that was going to be one of my questions for you is you know you've had five albums Holy crap. And though it's since 2016. And what is your, what does the whole process look like? Like what is the writing, uh, the recording, all, all of, you know, the whole procedure, how, what does that look like for you? Is it, does everybody live in the same sort of area or is it a collaborative effort? Um, no. So th th that is probably one of our only challenges is the fact that we don't all live in the same city, even though my, well, <laughs> my husband lives in the same house right? <laughs> <Hopefully. laughs> he's upstairs right now in the drum room. <laughs> but so, so he's pretty close, but um, Dave Reimer uh, lives in North Vancouver and mm -hmm. I'm in the, um, the more Southern region near the border. So we are well over an hour away. Right. Um, plus his, uh, partner is on the island so he's there which is even further and Sean Kelly is of course in Toronto but we've managed to come up with a, a multiple systems for making that work where we we sort of are depending on it like right now Sean is quite busy he's involved in the Rock of Ages show in Toronto but yeah. all throughout the year otherwise we're usually just always just bouncing ideas back before back and forth you know hey what about this cover or what about, you know, he'll 
record a little riff and you'll send it to me. I go, hmm, I really, really like that one. I'm going to drag it into my logic and we should work on that one in a few months. And uh, so we're always bouncing ideas back and forth. And now that COVID is over, my ultimate plan, of course, is to just get us all in the same city. So I will. what I'll do is I'll end up flying them out here. I'll fly them out and we'll earmark some rehearsal time. We will all get into the same room and we will... <laughs> jam some stuff out and I'll just walk up to the mic and sing and it'll I you know it just it'll all be magical I just believe in it it will happen I and, like I'll write, your <laughs> and I'll turn on my iPhone and I'll record them and I'll go great we just wrote an album and then we'll he'll come out at another juncture and we'll go into a studio we'll do our bed tracks and then um then my favorite part, one of my favorite parts is I bring it all back to my home studio and then I sit here and I work on it for a few months, just adding harmonies and keyboard parts and perfecting the vocals and the things that I want to do. And, uh, and then, and then we'll mix it my, yeah, but- with uh, Mike Fraser, who we've used on the last couple albums, who's fabulous, or whether that's someone else. I'm not quite sure what we're going to do for the next record. Our, for the project we're working on it actually right now <clears throat> Um, it's funny because we had a discussion last fall when we were on the road. We're like, what should we do next? We've written like, you know, like four original albums in the last five years. We've done a live album. We've done a Christmas album. And we all came up with the idea that it would be really, really fun to do a covers album, to, to do oh. an album of songs that are just cool, cool tunes that were influential right. to us over the years whether that be when we were teenagers growing up or whether that recently, I know that, I know that uh, one of the tunes that, tunes that um, we stumbled on just recently was from the two thousands that we were like, Oh, we should do that. And, uh, but yeah, so that's our next project is we're, we're actually working on a covers record. I now. love that. And so who would, who would be some of those people that you were just speaking of Lee? That it like people that motivated you or, or songs that you've always wanted to cover. Or is it a um, well, yeah. You know what? I don't, I don't want to go into too much detail because the list kind of keeps changing. Right. It's, it's in progress right now. Um, and I also kind of want it to be a little bit of a surprise. I can okay. tell you one person I'm probably going to cover for sure is Nina Simone. Um, at least one Nina Simone song because she was very influential to me. But I think what we will do is take that and, you know, we will Learonize it. We'll flip it on its head and give it a, <laughs> a Zeppelin-esque twist, twist right. in some way. And, um, yeah. So, um, yeah. I love that. You're always thinking, you're always thinking it's like the, you know, Elevate is, is a newer album, you know, your newest album and you're already making plans for the next album and you got a book on the go. And what is it that motivates you to just, to just keep on keeping on? Like what, because I think a lot of times when you have an, an artist that has had, you know, been blessed to have this longevity as you have had, they tend to sort of wind down, but but you are just like, there's no signs of <laughs> dropping. I know. I love it. I think it's inspirational. And so what is it that drives you to just, to just keep creating? I think, it, I think it's just in you. And I don't think it's a choice even with some people, I think. Yeah. Not what you do, it's who you are. And I think it, it's like breathing, you know, you got to be creating. Yeah. That's, a, you know, to ask me personally, what it is that drives me forward. Um, I don't know. I mean, I have kids, right? And I think a lot about what kind of a legacy that I want to leave for them. I think about that. Um, I'm I'm kind of ADD. <laughs> I mean, I'm kind of like, I'll be cooking. All day. Oh, I just got this idea. Can you watch that pen for a second? I hope <laughs> my husband's like, what? I'm like, oh, I'm going to go sit at the piano and try this out. So I'm, I'm a little bit like that. So um I don't know. I, I, I just, yeah. Um, oh yeah. And the really cool thing. Um, I don't know if I'm allowed to announce it yet, but I think it's going to air next week. We just got invited to do a, um, it's a city TV special for diabetes awareness, Canada. Oh, um, another, another fundraiser. Yeah. Well, another, it's another fundraiser. Um, there's going to be a silent auction thing as well, but it's all, it's, I think it's going to be broadcast nationally. I believe it's March 26th um, and it's for Diabetes Awareness Canada because I have a very good friend that has two diabetic children. Um, You know, it's just something, again, that's close to my heart. And um, 
um, we we did we performed a couple songs live um, for it. And uh, so I'm excited about that. So that's, I think that's going to be aired next weekend, actually, just after oh. our Edmonton show. We're coming to Edmonton next week. Yes, you are. The, is it at the casino or? It's at the uh, River Cree. The River Cree Casino. Yeah, I've, I'm, I'm excited. I don't think I've ever played there. So that's, it, yeah. It's a beautiful venue. And actually, oh, speaking of which, Lee Canfield, who you may, may or not know, he's a huge fan of my show and he's a huge fan of you, Lee. Oh. Okay. And he couldn't make the show tonight, but he texted me this morning. He's like, make sure you say hello to Lee for me. And and I can't watch it, but I'm going to watch it after. But tell her I will see her at the casino next weekend. So. <laughs> oh, awesome. <laughs> Bye for Lee Canfield. Uh, you know, Lee, getting back to the conversation we just had about, you know, just to, to keep moving forward and to keep creating and to keep, um, I, it made me think of, I was listening to, I was actually watching the video for Elevate today and uh i i really really love that song and you know the the line's so you know so sick of hate gonna detonate for heaven's sakes let's elevate and it almost makes me think of kind of what we were just talking about because to me that song and again music's you know it's it's very partial to who's listening to it um but to me it makes me think of uh like reinventing oneself and rising above and and i'm just wondering was that the sort of the theme behind that song or is that just my interpretation um, again, and I, <clears throat> I've said this many times, I try, I, I like to try to write lyrics in a way that can be a little bit open to interpretation great. for the listener so that he, everybody can, I mean, to me, that's what a great song is all about is you're able to personalize it for yourself. Great. Right. Um, so yeah, I mean, it, it's, it's about just rising above all the dissension out there, but especially let's be honest, like during COVID, everybody turned to their phones <clears throat> to for their social life, for their news and information, for their method of communicating with the outside world largely, if it wasn't directly with family. And some of that got pretty toxic, right? Yeah. Like um, what I what I really don't like seeing is the way some people tend to use, social media as a place where they can vent the ugliest parts of themselves. And there's no, there's no recourse because you are just a bubble on a screen. Right. You are not, you're, or that is attached to somebody's profile, whether that's fake or not. There's no, there's no actual recourse for your words. <clears throat> and I think that's, that's just, that's not how it should be used. I mean, or, I mean, we're for goodness sakes, we're living in a in a in a culture now with in the cyber world where it can be weaponized politically, Absolutely. and and it's just it's um it's that's kind of devastating. So that's kind of what Ele Elevate and Rock Bottom Revolution, both those singles, I was are kind of about because it was hard for it not. I'm yeah, Lee Aaron is not necessarily known for my political views, but you know it was very ever present on my mind during. <clears throat> during COVID and during all of the, everything that was going down in the world at that time. Right. Right. And I, and I know there's, there's a uh, visual references um, in elevate to the cell phone and, you know, yeah. and, and yeah. And I, and I wondered about trouble or rock bottom for that same reason too, because rock bottom, obviously it means different things to different people, you know, but rock bottom, you know, I think, I think there's a universal <laughs> thought that comes along with rock bottom and, you know, it's like the lowest of the low and, and, uh, you know, it's funny because I, I'm not one of those people who is attached to my cell phone or social media. And, and I think it drives the people around me nuts. <laughs> okay. Because I'm not the girl that maybe is going to message you back. Like if I get a messenger message, I, you know, sometimes I'll ditch my phone for eight hours at a time. And I do that, you know, just to keep sane because I, or like, I don't jump on it first thing in the morning because you know, generally something's going to either upset me or annoy me, or it's, it's not going to be the best way to store my day. Not always, but. Or you'll be down some rabbit hole and you're going, how did I get here? I do that occasionally. And I'm going, what am I doing? What yeah. am I doing on my phone right now? Like, <laughs> like, why do I, I don't care about this. And I literally have to go, go plug it in and leave it over there on the other side of the kitchen and do something different. Right. Like, I think we're all guilty of it once in a while, right? Oh, once in a while, for sure. But I mean, I, some, I do know some people that it has become toxic. It's literally a 24-7 addiction. And 
And uh, yeah, but I wanted to talk about another song, uh, which is uh, which is off the Radio On album, which I absolutely love, and it's Twenty One. And I love the theme of that song because we kind of been talking about, you know, about sort of the, you know the theory of that song was you know back in a simpler time and when you were young and and I heard you sing it in Calgary and I have to admit, we are in, it made my eyes leak. <laughs> It actually made my eyes leak because there's something about that song that's, you know, it's it's just beautiful. And to me, it's almost bittersweet because, you know, you're just talking about, uh, you know, there's a line, you know, making love beneath the setting sun, young and wild before the West was won, when dreams of life and love had just begun, you know, back when everything was new under the sun. And, and those lyrics are just... And, you know, in the way, you know, the style in which you sing it, which is just like this angelic, beautiful voice. Um, I just, that's one of my, that's one of my favorite songs of yours of, of more recent times. Because it really does, yeah, it just takes you back to like, you know, that time when you were 21 and, and the world was open in front of you and the possibilities were endless. And you hadn't quite become jaded yet. You know, you're, you're still, <laughs> this is again my perception, you know, but just those, those simpler days when, when life you know, life was all in, in front of you. And was that kind of the concept behind that song for you or? Well, you know, how do I explain it? I, I don't know if I'm going to articulate it quite right, but, um, you know, I, there's, there's power in aging. Yes. But, there's also grief involved with aging as well. Does that make sense? Absolutely. Because I, I'm, you know, I, I miss when, you know, how do I explain it? When everything was exciting and new, when you were young, everything, like the first time I went to, you know, Paris and I was able to look up at a, you know, ceiling that looked like it had been painted by Michelangelo and, you know, it was also new back then, you know, and, uh, and then when you get older, it's, sorry, I notice I'm having some terrible hair going on here. <laughs> <laughs> you look lovely. <laughs> anyway, um, you know, uh, you know, you, you get older and, you, you know, so it's, I guess I was grieving a little bit of the, that the fresh and the fun and the newness of being 21, right? And, you know, I guess I'm a person, I just feel like I'm always chasing that a little bit, but in a healthy way. You right, know? right. You know, we all are in a healthy way. I'm not going to go out and go get tanked at a party and pass out without my socks on or something. I'm not chasing it in that way, but I mean, like, you know, you know, just even by <clears throat> nature walks or whatever, but, um, so it's about it's about remembering when we were that age, but also embracing the fact that here we are and yeah. we've come this far. We're all pro, you know, we are all prodigal sisters and prodigal sons, right? We're all we all lose our way, and we all find our way back, right? And yeah. that's kind of what the song was about. I, you know, sometimes songs that make a little more sense to me down the road after I've written them. Right. I know that when I wrote that song, I had an idea in my head of what I wanted to write about. It, and I just sort of sat down at the piano and it came out one night. And um, I've had a, quite a few people tell me that it that they are moved in that way by that song. And so I'm, I'm glad. And, you know, even though people don't know that song per se, unless they own the radio on album um we've managed to create a medley with one of my older tunes only human and play them together seamlessly in the show yes and we started doing it and the reaction the first night we played it was so overwhelming to that song i was like oh this is this is this is resonating with people we need to play it and that's that's what I was trying to say when I said it made my eyes leak. Like it literally, oh, wow. it really moved me, but in a, in a good way. And that's why when I refer to 21, I refer to it as bittersweet because it is exactly that. It's like, you know, I don't want to say pining to be that age again, but maybe pining for some of the elements of it. You know, when, like you said, when everything was new and, and you know, life hadn't scarred you yet and, 
and you kind of felt invincible and and yet at the same time honoring the fact that you know there are definitely benefits to being the age we are now as well you know there you know one of my questions was going to be to you after this discussion about 21 was what do you miss about being 21 and and what do you not miss about being 21 well, I don't miss being stupid. <laughs> Good answer. I made some like zinger choices at that age of my life. Trust me, I did some dumb stuff, you know. Um, As we all did. We all did. Except mine is chronicled on the internet. So oh, right. I, was, I, I'm, I was a pseudo celebrity, right? So, like, that's what my husband always says. He said, Yeah, like lots of people do dumb stuff or take a dumb picture, but yours, he said, your, your entire history is online. Right. So yeah, there are some things. And then, and then the things that I, I miss about it was, you know, like, I don't know, um, you know, falling in love for the, for really falling in love for the first time, you know what right. I mean? Um, with that, and because we, you know, at that age, we would just fall in love with reckless abandon. You know, it's like three days in, you're like, I'm totally in love with this person, and like, I'm gonna I'm, marry this guy. <laughs> and like, now, if I had to date at this age, I'd go, I'd be like, you know, two weeks in, I'd be going, Is this guy like a psycho killer that I need to be wary of? Is he gonna drain my bank accounts? Like, <clears throat> because you know, we just we're a lot more cautious, we've been burned a lot I I enough times in our life, we've made those mistakes, we've been duped we've you know um yeah so I, I miss the innocent um spontaneity of being that age i really do great yeah great answer yeah and trust me dating at our age is not fun <laughs> <laughs> hang on to your husband lee because you don't want to do, you don't want to do the dating life at this age and i think we become set in our ways too i think that's the other thing you know not only have, have we been duped i love that phrase we've been duped so we're <laughs> you know, we're cautious and on the edge, but uh, but we're set in our own ways too, and it just I think it gets harder. So, I, I'm on the verge of getting a dog here pretty quick. So, <laughs> Aww. well, I have I got kids, dogs, a husband. I've got I got my little uh, you know, my little love nest here. So, which is which is all good, <laughs> right? And so, and your home is fairly new, is it not? Because we were talking before the show that where you are right now is actually a closet. A very, <laughs> I know <laughs> it's, it's attached to a little, little Harry Potter closet here. I, I love it. Sign, sign up in here. Um, no, it's actually my studio, and my studio, like I was explaining, my studio is actually out in this room here, but it's a little echoey, so that's why I closed the door. And the closet is so huge, I can hang guitars in here. I got my my, my sign from Vok when I played Vok in a couple of years ago. Right. On the wall, you know, my guitars. <laughs> Up there on the shelf, I've got all my uh, my uh, my ring lights and my my um, what are the what do you call it? The greens, my green screen for um, filming and stuff. And uh, yeah, it's a little, it's a little, it's a little creation factory here at my house. What a great space! And then you know you can shut the door and go into your own little world, and and then the studio is right out there. And yeah, it's great. Actually, I hear your husband has a huge album collection. Yes, he does. And right now um, it is living in two shipping containers on, <laughs> on our driveway, um, as well as one and a, we have a three car garage and it, two garage dollar stalls are full floor to ceiling with 12 by 12 vinyl boxes. It is it's nuts. Um, so we plan to rebuild his uh, uh, library. He had a gigantic media library, which was also a movie theater. And um, unfortunately, our old property, which we loved and which we had renovated and which was an acre, we were completely encroached by development. I remember doing these little Ask Lee things and there was like tractors, I think, behind me. And <laughs> at that time, it was just like, it was it was nutty. It got so noisy and we finally caved. We're like, I was just like, John, we have to move. We have to sell our house and move. We just can't stay here. It's unbearable. Um, plus the dust on everything from the construction and surrounding us. And so, yeah, I mean, they thought that we were like these real jerky people that were like digging our feet in, you know, like, you know, the guy in the movie Up. We're just like, you know, yeah. like, yeah, we're going to move, you know, but we just literally loved our house. 
We loved our space. We didn't want to move. We had a studio there. And so we moved and we've got a beautiful new home. It's, I, I like it better than my last house, actually, except we don't have the room um, that we had before, which was this, the studio room and the, uh, the media room. So we are, we have just had our development permit approved a year in. It's taken a year. So we're still, I'll keep you posted. Yeah, I can post it next time. Maybe when it's all set up, you could take us on a little tour. Absolutely, but I think I think we're probably uh, I don't know. I'd like to say a year, but everything always seems to take longer than anticipated. So great, great. I'm just going to go to a few comments here, Lee. So Chris sure. Preston is also hi, Chris uh, is commenting on 21. Said it makes him so emotional and it makes him cry oh. too. I think it's something when you when you can make someone cry. <laughs> I think it's a call. Like I've, I've done my job, my work. <laughs> my work is done. <laughs> uh, so Ricky Lama. Oh, hi, Ricky. He's a good fan of the show. Love him. He's saying the United States has Pat Benatar and Joan Jett. Big deal. We have we are in the best. Oh, huh? <laughs> <laughs> <Thank> you. <laughs> uh, oh, Karen Barg is in the house. Hey, Karen. Uh, hi, Karen. Uh, yeah, so Karen is Karen's just letting you know, reassuring your hair looks gorgeous. <laughs> oh, no, it's, I'm having a, I was like, anyway. I was all discombobulated because I didn't get the right link. And I was like, should I get ready? Is this happening? I didn't get any. Anyway, we had our little back and forth with email, our email mess up with the link. So I was yeah. like, no, anyway, I was, I felt unprepared. <laughs> but anyway. <laughs> Um, uh, what's happening here? Oh, John Helfrick is saying this is one of the best interviews he's seen. Thanks, John. Oh, thanks. Uh, Chris is referring to your rock and roll closet. <laughs> Thank <funny>. you. <laughs> uh, oh, so, so I'm sorry, you guys, I'm not going to get through all of these comments tonight. Oh, Lisa Guliak's in the house. Hi, Lisa. Hey, Lisa. Uh, so Lisa, for those of you that don't know, uh, Lisa Guliak Photography, she takes all the most incredible She's pictures. amazing. She's right? one of the best Canadian rock photographers right up there, I think, with someone like Dee Lippenwell. She's fantastic. She sure is. And, and by the way, the promo pictures that I used for Lee's show tonight were courtesy of Lisa Guliak. So always good. And I got to meet Lisa when I met you as well, which was another. Yeah, yeah. What a great night that was. Uh, Medina Sebastian, who's from Argentina, is a huge fan of yours. Oh. Okay. Uh, saying saludo, saludo Lee. Saludo. Uh, uh, yeah. Now Karen's commenting on Karen Barg is commenting on Lisa Guliak too. Oh, <laughs> so a lot of a lot of love in the air. <laughs> Perry Boyko, good to see you. Uh, so you know, I was thinking Lee about you know when you were talking earlier about your kids. Uh, on on one of your bios, it read uh, Lee Aaron plays guitar, does laundry, and picks up the kids after school. There was a there was a quote like that at one point, and I'm just wondering, was it ever a challenge to sort of maintain this this steady, successful career and be a mom all at the same time? Well, there's a reason why um, I went between 2004 and 2016 without releasing an original album. So uh, my daughter, our daughter, was born in 2004. My son was born in 2006, and um, I realized at that point that, you know, it, it, it was a little overwhelming at first. It was like, oh, this is, this is like truly my new job. <laughs> it's like, <laughs> it's like, there's no, there's no, and I, you know, I didn't want to be, um, I didn't want to, I felt strongly that, that now whatever works for you is great for you, right. but I didn't want to farm my kids out to a nanny all the time. I wanted to be a real hands-on mom. I thought I didn't wait this long to have them to do that. And um, and so, yeah, I called my agent and said, look, I, um, I wanted to only do a few shows a year. Please just send me the highest paying shows yeah. and I'll do a few shows. And in the meantime, I, uh, so that's what I did is I only left very occasionally and did a few shows. Um, and I was a hands-on mom for over a decade um, when they were little because I knew that I needed to be. And the reality is, you know, writing and recording an album, it's its a lot of very, very focused creative energy. And children take up so much of your creative energy. I mean, they would be in the bathtub together and I had all these puppets and I was doing puppet shows. <laughs> <laughs> like, la, 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 and I had them laughing and it's just like, you, it, there's 
there's a lot of creative energy involved in being a parent. You know, <laughs> yeah. we, were, we were doing crafts. <laughs> The, you know, you were doing crafts every night and painting and, you know, um, we were storytelling and re teaching Aww. them to read and, you know, you, that all of that is so important and it really, really sucks your creative energy. I, I was imagine. volunteering at the school. I was running reading groups and um, all kinds of things. I mean, one... I, I, I remember being in the grade one class and suddenly I'm Lear and I'm there. I'm with... A, I was sewing like you know, 30 bunny ears for some <laughs> Easter play. And I'm like, going because I was like one of the only moms old enough that had sewing skills. <laughs> okay. Like, trust me, parenting takes up a huge <clears throat> amount of energy. And I'm like, so I did other things. I did a few live shows. I, in the evenings after the kids were in bed, my husband and I sat there and we went through boxes and boxes of tapes and old footages that had been sent to me and recorded by various sources over the years. And I put together um, a three DVD uh, anthology set. So I did some other things. I didn't actually record an album, but I did some other things that were creative. I put out live in Sweden because I went and did the Sweden Rock Festival and had it taped. Things that were manageable. So I still was putting out some stuff, doing a few live shows, but the majority of my energy went to raising my kids. And then when they got old enough, when they were about 10, 12, 8, 10, something like that, then I'm like, okay, you know what? You guys can like, you guys can put your clothes on and brush your teeth yourself. Exactly. <laughs> you can go into the cupboard and get some Fruit Loops by yourself. Exactly. You know? <laughs> let, my kids, let my kids have Fruit Loops. I'm lying, but, <laughs> you know, um, and then I was like, okay, now, I can I can do this again, do so, and then it was sort of fun because I got to pull them into the process like right. um, fire, fire and gasoline. I involved like Tomboy was written for my daughter, and she's in the video, right? Right. You're aware of that, aren't you? No, I'm not actually. You did not know it was your daughter. Okay, the first single from Fire and Gasoline album <clears throat> is a song called Tomboy, and it was written for my ten year old daughter Angela, and. In that video, um, if you go on YouTube and you grab it, um, I it was her and a bunch of uh, her best friends from she was in a, she went to a fine arts school Weird. and I got a bunch of her little friends that were very gifted and we spent a day together working with them and teaching them how to play air drums and air guitar and my band is a ba a backup band of ten year old girls. Wow, that must have been, what an experience for those girls. I mean, for your daughter, certainly. Oh, it, it was so fun to involve her. And they're all wearing like <laughs> the, the Elvis jailhouse, jailhouse rock stripes. Like they, they look badass. They look great. Yeah, yeah. I, I just didn't that know was, that was your daughter. And, and so is yeah. she musical as well? Has she sort of taken on those traits of mom? Um, <clears throat> she is now uh, 18 years old. Right. She's in her first year of university. And she is a majoring at a an intense musical theater university out here. She had to audition to get in. She had to audition against about 500 kids and they took 20. She got in. She's... How proud are you, Mama oh. Lee? Wow, hey? <laughs> well, I can see my periphery influence in her life. Although I can tell you, I have never given her a voice lesson. Ever. Is she that just, right? Yeah, she's like, you're not cool. You don't know what you're doing. I'm not listening you're to my you. mom. <laughs> you're my mom. And but she's 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 incredibly gifted. She's so talented. And she um she also auditioned. So this summer when she's off college, uh university, sorry, she um we have something here in the Vancouver area called Theater Under the Stars. Nice. And it runs in Stanley Park. It's a big outdoor thing that goes all summer long. It's amazing and she auditioned and she got in it her oh first my God. Time. so like i'm just like can can i say i'm proud i'm like bursting with pride i, I would know. imagine and then um our son is also uh he's taught himself i was making a joke a couple of weeks ago on facebook that he's this empty guitar hook over here this is my one of my favorite guitars it, i no longer it's been taken over by my son he's got <laughs> some weird app these boys eh, they teach themselves to play guitar with apps 
so we got some app and I'm like, I don't even get it. And he taught himself to play guitar with this app. He's, um, yeah, self-taught and he's, uh, he's getting quite good. So, yeah. Wow. That's impressive. So, yeah. So I was going to ask you what, one of the things, uh, what would you consider one of your greatest achievements? And I have a feeling you would say it was your kids. Well, they're not just my my greatest achievement. They are. It <laughs> yeah, it did take oh, two. John, we're not leaving you out of the equation. <laughs> so, um, so personally, yeah. I would say, but would you say personally, but professionally, what would you say is your greatest achievement or something that you're the most proud of? Well, yeah, I get my kids, my kids, you know, the, our kids, they're not only are they um musical and talented but you know what they're just they're really really great people they're really awesome people i really like them i like them both and you know um it's interesting because when they're young you know i think you spend a lot of time i know i spent so much time worrying and like reading every parenting manual and things that i could and then at a certain point you just realize that they, they are just becoming they are their own little spirits and they become the people they're going to become. You only have so much influence on them. And then they're just sort of by about, you know, 13 or 14, they're just kind of off and running and becoming the people they're going to become. And they're just, they're just amazing. They really are. And, you know, besides that, I think my, the things I'm most proud of, um, you know, other than that would be, the times in my life that I've been given a fan choice award, like where fans voted and I won something, you know what I mean? Like I had Toronto music awards. I've got a music express magazine award a couple of years ago. Um, um, my, I was uh, given the walk of fame <clears throat> award um, in my hometown where I grew up just outside Toronto um, in 2016. So not only did I get like one of those like cool stars on the sidewalk, but I got this award here in my studio. And that was because enough people came forward and wanted to be nominated. Right. So for that award. Right. Um, I, yeah. So those are probably the awards that I'm most proud of. You know what I mean? I would imagine because, you know, they come from the people, they come from your exactly. people, their plans rather than some committee. You know, so yeah, I, that makes and sense. My golden bean, my golden bean. The golden bean, that's right up there, Robert Young. <laughs> I've never thought I'd get a golden bean. <laughs> but that's an amazing one too, when you think of because all those beans that you sold, the proceeds are going to such a worthy cause. How many more reasons do we need to lovely Erin? <laughs> now, you know, she's selling all this coffee and donating the proceeds. I just love it. Um, so, so what's coming down the road for you, Lee? I, I, I'm pretty certain that this isn't the end of the albums. Is uh, aside from the cover album that you were talking about, um, what else do we see f coming for you in the future, and and concert dates included? Is so this year we have a bunch of concert shows coming up. Um, if you go on leearn.com, you can see all the tour dates. I don't have them all in my head, but for the first time in quite a while, we're actually going to be heading to the East Coast this year. Oh, I will play yeah. Newfoundland and I'm going to play near ha in Dartmouth, Halifax, Nova Scotia. So I'm so thrilled about that. It has been quite a while. I think the last time, oh, years ago I played, a few years ago I played Casino Nova Scotia and I also played the Weir Rockin' Festival, which I don't think is happening. Some of these festivals mount for a few years and then they lose their sponsors or funding or something happens and they don't end up have being able to remount and they dissolve and they have to start new festivals. So I'm super thrilled that I'm getting to the East coast. I'm also um, later next month um, heading out on a monsters, my first monsters of rock cruise. Cruise. So, yeah, man, that's going to be I'm so excited. Like get to sail the high seas with a bunch of rock stars and meet fans. And my, um, my tour manager got in touch with me uh, a couple of days ago and he said, good news. You're playing the two, you're playing the poolside stage and the main stage. So I guess those are the, I didn't know this, but I guess they're the two best stages to play. So I'm super excited. I'm going to get to play for some of my American fans, nice. which is something I rarely get a chance the opportunity to do. So um, yeah, I'm just like hoping and praying. I don't discover that I have seasickness because <laughs> I've never done a cruise before. I had seasickness once in my life, and that was taking a um, 
ferry, the long ferry to Newfoundland. That was a storm and I don't know. Oh, well, that's different, I think. If there's a storm, I think. Huh? I think it's different if there's a storm. Yeah. And then got, like, water turbulence. Yeah. The short one wasn't running, so we had to take the long one or something. I don't even remember. It was quite a few years ago. And then we were, and then we would, we got stuck in our tour bus waiting and waiting until they finally deemed it was safe. It was still rough seas, but it was safe to sail, you know. And I think we might have drank a little bit too much while we were waiting <laughs> because there was nothing else to do in the what bus. Else did you do? played into me being, being sick because I'm no, speaking of being 21 and doing young stupid <laughs> stuff, but yeah, so there was that. <laughs> so I remember my tour, my 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 crew was so tired, and I get on the I get on this this uh ferry to go to Newfoundland, and within an hour I was like green of the gills i was oh, heaving yeah. and i was like banging on the door <laughs> my light man i'm like you gotta let me have your birth because i need a i need a toilet to throw up for the whole <laughs> like, it was just it was a little bit of a nightmare but but that said i'm so looking forward to coming <laughs> aside from well you'll make different choices now right there'll be no, no. <laughs> <laughs> that is not something I'm you know excessive uh that. drinking of the hooch on this ship oh, just like, we did some dumb stuff when we were young anyway you, know that was fun. you gotta have fun. 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 Right? If we didn't do stupid stuff we wouldn't know when we got smart exactly <laughs> <laughs> Right, and who doesn't want to play poolside? That sounds amazing. Lisa yeah. Gulak uh, is commenting that cruise is going to be awesome. She's saying so. Yeah, I'm very, very excited. Very. Excited. When is that cruise again, Lee? That we uh, we the April 29th through May 4th. Oh, also coming up quick. Yeah, and so we are leaving from Port Canaveral, and I think we go to Punta Cana and Labadee. In Haiti, I guess it is, or something, or yeah. So the, this is going to be, it's going to be fun. I like to play two shows. I get to like hang out and like be a tourist and yeah, right, yeah. yeah, super exciting. Wow, yeah, lots, lots coming down the road for you, Lee. And I love, I love, love, love that there's no signs of you slowing down anytime soon. I think you send out such a powerful message to again everybody, but to especially women that you know just because just because you hit fifty, you don't you know you don't have to put a cardigan on and start gardening. I mean, my God, I saw you, you know, a month ago or whenever that was, and you look amazing. Like, oh, thanks. Serious, seriously, you know what I mean? It does. It, like, I love, I love these women that are promoting the notion that life can begin at 50. You know, I think Karen Bard was saying in the comments here that she's just starting her life at 50. And I mean, I started this show when I was in my fifties. And, and so I think I just, I love women sticking together and getting that message out. Like the sky's the limit. And, and Absolutely. Feel the fear you and do, it do anything anyway. you want to do. You know, the only, I, you know, the only thing holding you back is you. That's, That's right. What I think, you know, so why not? Right. Yeah. So you were asking about away. projects. Mm -hmm. were, so we're going to be touring. We're going to, we're working on this covers record, um, yet to make a s studio schedule, but that's coming up in the very near future. Um, and uh, we also have a live album that we recorded when we played the Elma Combo last year, which is sitting on a hard drive at my house, but it's not the right time to put out another live album because we just put out a live album in 2019, but it, that is also forthcoming down the road. I am working on my book. Um, is the book going to be out, Lee? That I, I can't definitively promise um, okay. because I have <laughs> been... I've, you know, like I just went back last week and revised and edited a couple chapters. It's sort of like a work in progress right now. Okay. Um, it, it it will be coming out at some point, but um, I'm I'd rather how do I explain it? Rather than rushing to get it out, I want to make sure that I'm really really happy with it because it's my story. One hundred percent, and it's out there forever. Once it's out there, I it's might write another book at some point. I don't know, but this right. is my story, and I want it to really accurately reflect the right um the right messages and the right the right po points piv pivotal points in my life that i wanted to reflect so i'm not rushing myself so in between all this other stuff that i'm doing is when i'm writing it if that makes yeah. sense absolutely I, mean, you know what? I can guarantee you this band and my and myself you know unless something drastically totally, 
<laughs> unforeseen happens, we will make another, we'll be making another original album as well pretty soon because we all love to write. It's in our blood. It's in our bones. It's what we do. And, you know, it's who you are. You know, it's just, I know we're going to be, we'll, we'll be doing another original album soon as well. Probably next year. <laughs> probably next year. I don't doubt it. Well, that makes us happy, Lee. I just, I can't thank you enough for stopping by again. And the one thing I love about bringing you back, Lee, is that you always have something new to talk about. Oh, I yeah. often refer to you as the hardest working women in the, woman in the industry. And, you know, proof of it here right now, you've got so much going on, which is one of the things we love about you. So um, on behalf of all the viewers and fans, we wish you nothing but health, happiness, continued success all things amazing and and i hope that you'll come back either when your next album comes out or your book comes out whenever you got something new to share you're always welcome here on the show well i'm sure that you'll be in the loop so i will i will be happy to come back awesome. <laughs> so Thank you. maybe i'll put some more decorations up in my closet <laughs> A little white. Maybe I'll paint it a funky color. I don't know. Nicer than any closet I have in my house. I'll tell you that. <laughs> <laughs> my closets have like brooms and stuff. In them. <laughs> Great on. Thanks again. Okay. Thank you all there so much for tuning in. I really appreciate you being with Lee and I tonight. Uh, next week, I am doing a special uh, 2023 Junos recap. And my special guest will be Karen Barg, actually. Oh. Cool. who has played with Lee and has played with uh, the guys from Prism and several others. Uh, and Karen was also a Juno nominee. Uh, she was nominated for a Juno and she was actually at the Junos. Um, and we will have also another special guest, which is going to be a surprise, but uh, recapping the Junos next Sunday here on Etc. Live. So until we see you then, everybody, take care, stay safe and sane. Thanks for tuning in. Be really nice to each other. Bye-bye. Bye, Lee. Bye. <laughs>